Before that, Christine Walkden has been following the story of a female pioneer who helped save the lives of World War II Spitfire pilots. And watch out, because Christine's all revved up to go. In the 1970s, the residents of Hampshire were startled to see the boy racer's favourite, a Triumph Dolomite, whizzing round the lanes with an elderly woman at the controls. The person behind the wheel was an engineering genius. Her name was Tilly Schilling. As a child, Tilly loved engines and taking them apart. She developed a lifelong passion for very fast vehicles. I'm going to follow in Tilly's tracks on four wheels, two wheels and even some wings. Tilly had motorbikes as a teenager, but by the 1930s she was a pioneering racer here at Brooklyn Circuit, where engineer and vintage bike collector Sam Lovegrove has brought me one of Tilly's finest. Look at this. What have we got here? It's a 1934 500 race in Norton. Wow. Just the same as the one that Tilly rode here during the really? 1930s. Yeah, exactly the same. Yeah, God, look at that. Do you fancy a ride? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Let's go for this. Clutch. Brake. And the most important one, throttle. A woman racing a motorbike was a rare sight in the 1930s, but Tilly didn't just race, she made history. Tilly was awarded the Brooklyn's Gold Star for a lap average of in excess of 100 miles an hour. One of only three women ever awarded that here on a motorcycle. That was absolutely fab. That's amazing, isn't it? Well, I haven't been on a bike in 40 years and wow. it all came back. To get to university, Butcher's daughter Tilly took out a loan and became one of the first two women to take an engineering degree at Manchester. An amazing woman, a truly amazing woman. When the war broke out, Tilly's engineering skills were needed by her country. At Biggin Hill Heritage Hangar, Spitfire pilot Richard Varel is about to make one of my dreams come true. I'm about to experience the third of Tilly's machines. I am so excited. I mean, I just feel like a kid. Dream come true. Bucket list stuff, this. So I feel quite emotional. In 1940, Tilly was working at the Royal Aircraft Establishment when a fatal flaw was discovered in the Spitfire's Merlin engine. So Richard, what was the problem? Imagine we're right behind a Messerschmitt and suddenly he dies. If we were to follow him, the fuel got thrown up inside the carburetor right. and it would cause too much fuel to go in and so the engine would have coughed and spluttered right. and briefly cut out and he'd have got away. The excess fuel problem wasn't just inconvenient, it was deadly. Were pilots killed because of the halt? Oh yes. This was a national emergency with engineers racing to find a solution. So, Christine, how was that? That was truly amazing. I mean, the emotion I felt just being in such an iconic plane. If you had a Metasmiths up your rear end and you were trying to get out of the way, that would be frightening. Tilly found the solution to the engine problem and it was incredibly simple. Tilly came up with this bright idea of working out exactly how much fuel that the engine would need and then she designed this washer with exactly the right hole so that it restricted the amount of fuel that would go up into the engine and it continued to produce power. With their engines restored, Spitfires played a crucial role in Britain's air war, thanks to Tilly's washer. Just a washer? Just a In fact, I've got one here for Have you. you. I mean, that is so simple. But Something like that saved people's lives. Yes, and the pilots, as you can imagine, were very grateful, but maybe a little disrespectful in as much as they called it Miss Schilling's orifice. <laughs> Tilly was awarded an OBE for her efforts in the war, and I think it was truly well deserved. A war-winning speed demon and pioneering engineer. Cheers, Tilly. I think there's a whole new series for Christine there, don't you? What, flying, riding oh, motorbikes? Just bikes and flying and all sorts. Tremendous. What a wonderful story as well. It was. Um